Welcome back to Just Make Games. Uh, in this video, I'm going to try to show you as best as I can uh, how to use the particle editor. Um, I'm going to try to keep this all in one video, but particle editor is kind of lengthy, and you know it takes some playing around with to, to get it to work properly. So uh, bear, try to bear with me if I move a little too fast here. Just go ahead and pause it and try to match up what I'm doing. Uh, first off, what you need to know is how to open the particle editor. There's a couple ways you can go about doing it. You can come right up here where it says DB and click on that and it's going to open up the database view and you're going to come over here and click on the particles tab. Now that's one way to do it. If for whatever reason you did something and you don't see the DB up there you can also come up to view, open view pane and then database view right here. And it's going to open up to the same thing. Now the f after you click on the particles tab the first thing that you're going to need to do is create a group. Um, for this one, I'm just going to show you how to create a basic fire particle. Um, if you look through the the CryEngine 3 manual, uh, it's gonna it has kind of a really well crappy tutorial on how to make a really bad looking fire. Uh, and hopefully in this one, I'll make it uh, to where your first fire is going to look a lot better than that. So for the group, we're going to put fire. And then for the name, we're going to put fire as well. It's good to keep your particles in groups. As as you know, fire actually comes in many different types of particles. You're going to have the embers coming off. You're going to have the flame itself. You're going to have smoke, all of which would be combined underneath the group of fire. But I'm just going to show you how to make the flame part right now. Once you make the particle itself, it's going to come up and it's going to show up in a, a tree type configuration over here. And then right down here is pretty much a little preview of what your particle looks like if you don't actually have it placed inside the world here. Now this world, um, and it's got stuff in there, it's just because I was using this level to work on some scripts, but it'll work just fine for this tutorial. Um, so the first thing that we want to go ahead and do is we want to figure out what texture that we're going to use. Now, uh, I'm going to use a texture that actually comes with the free SDK of the CryEngine. So go ahead and hit these little three dots here to open up the file browser. You're going to want to come down here to sprites. And then uh, we're going to use the flame animation. Let's see if I can find it here. Flame animation A, right here. Now, unlike the tutorial, this actually has several parts, and I will show you how to use an animated sprite. So hit open, that's going to load it up right here. You can mouse over the three little dots just to confirm that that's what you got there. Okay, now first off, we're going to come back up at the top uh, where this says continuous. This pretty much means that the, that the particle is going to run continuously rather than stop after a certain amount of time count shows you how many of the particle itself is actually going to be showing up on the screen at any given point. Uh, for this one, we're going to put 50 because fire is pretty chaotic. And then particle lifetime, we're just going to stick that at 3. Now we're going to go back and go a little bit deeper into these values as we go to randomize everything, but I just taking it slow here at first. Um, this blend type, and future tutorials I'll show you why you changed this, but for now we're just going to change this down to additive. And then you're going to uncheck octagonal shape. Now, we're going to move, I'm going to move this over to my other screen just so you can just kind of see what we're doing here, but I'll try to leave it on as best as I can. You want to drag down where that little star is, you want to drag it from the database view into the world. Make sure you move it to where you want it to be. Now, it's, it looks all weird right now, but that's okay. Uh, because we haven't set up the tiling. That's what we're going to do right now. There's no real good way for me to show this to you and keep that on the screen at the same time. Okay. Now, right here to texture tiling, you only need this whenever you have an animated sprite. But as you can tell, there's four along the x-axis, four animations, and two along the y. So that's what we're going to set up right here. And then two along the Y. It's going to start it off at zero for the first tile. Uh, variant count, I always put that at double the X axis. And then animated frames count, I put it as f four times the variant count. 
and then animated frame rate uh, we're, we're just going to take that up to let's say 8 and then you just want to go ahead and click animation cycle and animation blend like I said in the future I'll go ahead and try to go into a little bit more depth here but I'm trying to give you a crash course as best as I can now back up at the top uh, we're gonna go ahead and open particle lifetime because fire is so chaotic you know some little flames are gonna last a lot longer than others we're gonna drop that all the way up to one and then this here, you're going to have these graphs throughout the whole particle editor. It, think of it as pretty much a timeline while the particle exists. The length of time that this represents is actually the length of time that you set up here in the particle lifetime. So, you know, even though you see all these little bars here, it still means three seconds because that's what we have it set to. So I'm going to drop this right down here so that way it dips off at the end. As you can see, it, it's kind of moving, but not quite what we want yet. I'm going to put this back in the way here for a minute. Now we're going to leave the size as 1, but we're going to put a random modifier on it. We're going to put that to, let's say, 3. That way, as the particle emits, it's going to randomize. And we're going to drop this down. Now, another tip about these little bars. You can have up to three dots. So if I double click on the line, it'll add another dot for me to mess with the line with. Now because you know fires all different shapes, it's not just the shape of that animation. We're gonna put a stretch on it. We're gonna put a I'd say 0.35. Now oh, that's good enough. And then a random, we're gonna put that up point two. Now how I'm opening these up I should have told you but there's a little arrow next to these that you can click on. Might be kind of hard to see in this video but as I highlight over it there's a little orange box that comes through it. Now the speed it's kind of important we're gonna put that up to I'd say th three for now see what it looks like. Now the good thing about the the particle editor is you don't actually have to be in game to see what this looks like. You can pretty much see the, what it's going to look like from here. Now, um, uh, 2D sprites don't necessarily use the X and Y axis. They only really use the Z axis to rotate on. So we're going to put in, we're going to have up to 180 degrees rotation on the Z axis. And then whenever it spawns, we're going to use the random rotation rate of 50. So that way as it spawns, it can spawn 50 degrees in either other way. Now, another th I'm, I know I'm kind of jumping around here, but it's what you're going to find with this particle editor is uh, it's, it's, it takes kind of an artistic touch rather than painting with colors you're painting with alphas and timing uh, so I, I just jump around to get it look right and you're going to find that you're going to play around with this thing for hours and hours until you finally get your particle exactly the way you want it now the alpha what an alpha does is think of it as opacity or maybe even invisibility um, so throughout the particle life, it starts out here, and we're gonna have we want it to disappear at the end. But fire never is at full glow from the from the base up, so it it always appears a little bit above the the source of the flame. So it's gonna be it's gonna completely be invisible, and then it's gonna come to full visibility, and then kind of just drop off. Now, fire is a source of light. It'll provide light on the objects around it. So we're going to put this all the way up to 1. And the same with the emissive HDR dynamic. Now, later on, you can play around with it casting shadows and global illumination and everything like that. But for the purpose of this, we're not going to really get into it all that much. So let's see what it's looking like so far. It's a pretty tall flame, but that's okay. It's, we still got a long way to go here. So, 
The next thing is, is fire kind of jumps around from the base. So we're going to put that at 0.3, and you're going to see it's going to pop up from slightly different spots each time. Now angles, now we're going to change this emit angle right here. And as I raise it up, you'll see how it spreads it out. Now that's a little too much. We're going to drop that down to, I'd say about 20. That doesn't look too bad. But then we want to randomize it because it, you don't want it to constantly look like the same thing. So we're going to put that up to, say, 0.5 and it's starting to it's starting to take shape here it's a pretty raging fire but that's okay okay and there's a lot of other things here that we can we can mess with such as air resistance um, Air resistance kind of takes all the resistances into account. Whether if you're making it underwater, you're obviously going to have a very high resistance to the particle. It doesn't necessarily have to be in air, but it's a resistance nonetheless. So we're going to put that up to say 0.27, and you're going to see how it resists some of the particles. Oops. Okay but we want it to be kind of random as well. And don't feel bad if you don't get this right right off the bat. Like I said, it's going to take hours of playing around and probably with almost every single particle that you ever create. You're going to take a long you're going to you're going to bring it in here thinking that you know exactly how you're going to make it and then as you're making it, you just completely change it right in the middle because you find a better way to do it. but it's starting to take shape, although I'm not a big fan of how it's still constantly emitting from the same spot. So we're going to increase this position offset a little bit more. There we go. Now, one thing that we're seeing here that isn't very realistic is it looks, seems like all the particles are moving at the same speed. and uh, So we're going to come to the speed here and randomize it. We're going to put that up to say 0 0.2 and see how that looks. Mm, let's randomize it a little bit more. Let's put it up to 0 0.4. There we go. And as you can tell, because it's an animated sprite, you can see each one of these little particles here. Uh, they're kind of hard to distinguish as they're all running together, but that's the purpose of this particular sprite, or this particular particle. But each of these sprites, uh, as you can tell, are animated. That's due to that tiling effect that we put into place right here. Now, the Cran Engine does, does come with some pretty lengthy animations that you can go around and play with. You just got to make sure to count how many X X means how many tiles across, which is four, and Y is how many tiles down, which is two here. So they got some that are a good.